Today I want to share with you how to make five homemade salad dressings, including a delicious ranch dressing and a retro green goddess dressing. Hi sweet friends, I'm Mary and welcome to Mary's Nest, where I teach traditional cooking skills for making nutrient-dense foods like bone broth, ferments, sourdough, and more. So if you enjoy learning about those things, consider subscribing to my channel and don't forget to click on the little notification bell below. That'll let you know every time I upload a new video. Now when you get ready to make these salad dressings, you can make them right in your salad bowl if you want and just whip it right up and then throw in your lettuce. But if you're not ready to toss the salad immediately, you can still whip it up in your bowl and then you can take your salad tongs and you can just cross them like this, put them into your bowl and then put your lettuce on top. So your salad dressing will be down in the bottom but all your lettuce will be lifted up above it sitting on your salad forks or your salad tongs uh, waiting to be tossed but not getting soggy from any dressing if you're about a half an hour or so away from actually serving your salad. Now if you're just making your salad dressing in order to have it in your refrigerator or pass it around the table or whatever the case may be, you can really make it in any kind of jar that you want. And the vinaigrettes work real well uh, in any kind of uh, salad dressing cruet. Uh, these you can find at your grocery store. They're often sold where the salad dressing packets are sold, which I don't like to use because they sometimes have artificial ingredients in them. But you'll often find these cruets sold in that area as well. But uh, I bought this at a local thrift shop and there's often many there and they're usually under a dollar. So be sure to keep your eyes open for that. Now I also want to mention something about shelf life. Of the salad dressings that we're going to make today, your vinaigrettes can last a good two weeks in the refrigerator. And your creamy dressings, your dairy-based dressings, can stay fresh about one week in your refrigerator. And one more thing I want to mention before we actually get started making the dressings, which is very important, is that if you check the description below, there'll be a direct link uh, to my website where you can print out all of these recipes. So be sure to check that description and this way you can just sit back and relax and watch the video and you don't need to be worry about taking notes. The first salad dressing I'm going to show you how to make is a vinaigrette. But I'm going to show you three different varieties, but I'm just counting them as one since the recipes are very similar. Now I'm going to start with a French vinaigrette. And what you're going to need is a teaspoon of Dijon mustard. And I've just gone ahead and put that right into this jar uh, because I'm going to make the vinaigrette in this jar. Next you're going to need a half a teaspoon of salt and I'm just using a fine ground sea salt and you're going to need a quarter teaspoon of freshly ground black pepper and we're going to go ahead and put those right into our jar. Next you're going to need two tablespoons of apple cider vinegar and this is a raw apple cider vinegar that I make homemade and if you'd like to learn how to do that I'll link to that uh, in the iCards and in the description below. Now I know you might be saying Mary, Mary Apple cider vinegar in a French vinaigrette? That's not right. You should be using a wine vinegar. And you're 100% correct. But as you know, I like to make traditional nutrient-dense foods. And so instead of using the wine vinegar, I like to use the raw apple cider vinegar, which is rich in good bacteria. And so this is a nice way of introducing uh, probiotic-rich foods to our families. So in go our two tablespoons of raw apple cider vinegar with the mother in it. And then what I like to do at this point is just kind of swirl things around a little and let the salt dissolve in the vinegar before we proceed with any more steps. Next, all you're gonna need is a tablespoon of a finely chopped shallot or a red onion or a white onion, whatever you have on hand. The shallot is traditional, uh, but that may not be something that you always commonly have in your fridge uh, or in your pantry. Uh, so use whatever you have. And you just need about a tablespoon finely chopped. And now we'll just go ahead and add in our chopped shallot and just let that mix around too uh, a little bit with the vinegar and the salt and the mustard and everything that's marinating lovely in here, marinating together. Now the mustard is going to work to help uh, emulsify the dressing, but as an extra insurance policy, what I like to do is to start first just taking a little bit of the olive oil and putting it into the dressing, in, into the dressing in the making. So as you see what I have here, less than 
this teaspoon full. I'm just going to go ahead and put that in and then I'm going to put a lid on here and give it a good shake to help that oil start to help to emulsify the dressing. Uh, now what I'm going to do is I'm just going to use the standard uh, canning lid and canning ring that came with my jar. This is just an eight ounce, a little eight ounce canning jar. Uh, you can also use the white storage lids if you have those as well or any jar you have will work fine. Um, and for those I know, I get a lot of questions about the canning lid. Uh, this is, these are um, from Ball and they're treated with a substance here that won't interact with the food. And this is BPA free. I know some people worry, you know, about uh, having BPA exposed to the, the chemical BPA exposed to their food. Alrighty, well we've got that little bit of olive oil in there and now we'll go and give this a shake to help with the emulsification. Now I'm going to go ahead and put in a little more olive oil and I forgot to mention this but it will be in the written uh, directions this is six tablespoons of olive oil and I like to do a one to three ratio so we had two tablespoons of vinegar and six tablespoons of olive oil and this is an extra virgin olive oil now some people like to do a one to four ratio. Uh, that tends to be more of the European style. So it's a matter of what consistency and taste you like with your dressing. Do you like it a little more with a vinegary tang to it or do you prefer it more with the richer uh, olive oil flavor? So, but this is one to three, but you can certainly do a one to four ratio. Alrighty, well, I've got that in and now we'll give it up another, we'll give it another shake. Now we'll just go ahead, I always like to just start with a little, you know, emulsifying a little bit of the oil in first and now we can just go ahead and add in the rest of our olive oil. And now we'll give this a real good shake and get that all emulsified in and we'll give it a taste and see how it is. Well this is beautifully emulsified so let's take this lid off and I'm just going to take a clean spoon, I'm going to put a little bit in the bowl here and we'll see how this came take a little bit of lettuce, give it a taste. This is a good time as the home cook, you know, to give it a little taste and determine if you want to add additional salt and pepper. Mmm, it's perfect. Now all I'm going to do before I store this in my fridge is write on, on the lid what it is, French vinaigrette, and put the date as to when I'm making this. So then I'll know exactly what it is and of what level of freshness it has. And that's what I, why I really like to use these canning lids uh, because they're so easy to write on. Well, now that we've got our French vinaigrette finished, we're going to make an Italian vinaigrette. And that I'm going to put in the cruet because we use a lot of Italian vinaigrette. Now for the Italian vinaigrette, we're going to make a full cup of dressing. For the French vinaigrette, we only made half a cup. And one thing I want to mention about vinaigrettes in general, when you go to refrigerate them, they may congeal somewhat because when olive oil uh, is cooled, it tends to harden up a bit. But once you take it out of the refrigerator and have it on your table or have it out on your counter as you're getting ready to prepare your meal, uh, within a few minutes it starts to come back to its liquid state. So don't worry uh, if you take it out of your fridge and it looks a little firm. It, when it comes up to room temperature, it'll be fine. Now to make the Italian vinaigrette, what I've got here is a teaspoon of salt and that's the fine ground sea salt. I've got a half a teaspoon of freshly ground pepper and I have a teaspoon of oregano. Now for me, uh, for an Italian vinaigrette, it's all about the oregano. If you want, you certainly can use a teaspoon of Italian seasoning. And uh, if you saw my uh, earlier video where I showed how to make 10 seasoning blends and one of them was an Italian seasoning blend, you can certainly use that if you want. And again, as with the French vinaigrette, I'm also using apple cider vinegar for this recipe. Now again, yes, red wine vinegar would be more traditional uh, for an Italian vinaigrette, but as I said earlier, when it comes to nutrient-dense cooking, I really like to uh, introduce raw apple cider vinegar uh, into our meals and putting it in salad dressing is perfect. And next what I've gotten here is one clove of garlic that I've crushed. You can mince it with a knife or if you have a mortar and pestle like this and you want to uh, mash it all up, uh, which is the way I like to do it, uh, you can do that too, whatever, whatever is easiest for you. And you can certainly use more garlic than just one clove. 
And just going back to the apple cider vinegar for a minute, this is a quarter cup of apple cider vinegar. And then we're gonna use three quarters of a cup of extra virgin olive oil. So into this cruet, I'm just gonna go ahead and add our seasonings. And then I'll add in the apple cider vinegar and the garlic and just give that salt a little bit of time uh, to, to dissolve in the vinegar. I've got that salt dissolving with the other uh, oregano and pepper and therein went the garlic. And I'll just give that a little twizzle around and let that all uh, meld in and dissolve together. Now, if you were making this vinaigrette in the salad bowl and you had your whisk and with one hand you were whisking and with the other hand you were slowly drizzling in your olive oil to get a nice emulsification, that works great. But when you're just sort of throwing it together in a jar like this or in a cruet, what I find works really well, as I did with the French vinaigrette, is to just put in a little bit of uh, olive oil, and this is a clean spoon, and just put in a little bit of olive oil and give it a shake to help it emulsify. And then I'm going to do the same thing again with one more tablespoon, and, or a teaspoon actually, and then I'll go ahead and add in all of the uh, olive oil at once. But this at least kind of just gives it a little bit of a head start to help emulsifying, because especially in this one, we don't have the Dijon mustard. Now, I know that some uh, Italian vinaigrette recipes will call for the Dijon mustard to help with that little bit of emulsification, but for me it's just not Italian dressing, <laughs> Italian vinaigrette if there's uh, Dijon mustard in it. But if you want, you can certainly add in a teaspoon or more of the Dijon mustard. Now I'm just gonna go ahead and add in the rest of our olive oil and give this a really good shake and we'll give it a taste and see how that flavor of oregano comes through. Well, this looks glorious and it smells wonderful. I'm just gonna take a little bit, put it in here, get a little piece of lettuce and we'll give it a taste. See how this is. It smells so good. I love oregano. Mmm, <laughs> mmm, that's delicious. It's perfect. Now, if you wanna turn this into a balsamic vinaigrette, all you would need to do is replace the apple cider vinegar with balsamic vinegar. And you can also leave out the oregano as well. Now, if you have a very high quality balsamic vinegar, it will have a sweetness to it. And so that's all that you'll need is just that quarter cup of the balsamic vinegar. However, if you have a lower end balsamic vinegar, which is fine if that's what your grocery store carries, then you'll wanna add a little extra sweetness. So you'll wanna add maybe, let's start with a teaspoon, uh, maybe I like to use sucanat, that's the real uh, sugar, the dried cane juice. Um, or maybe a little maple sugar. Maple sugar doesn't really have that strong and overpowering flavor. And so you could use that, especially the uh, balsamic vinegar will overpower any maple flavor. So you don't have to worry about that. Um, and then if you don't have options to those type of natural sweeteners, you can always just add a little brown sugar. And I'll have those directions for the balsamic vinaigrette um, ready for you to print out over on my website. So you'll have all three, so don't worry. Now we're gonna make Thousand Island dressing. This is one of my husband's favorites, so we'll make a generous amount. But you can always adjust these recipes up or down to make whatever amount you want. First, let's go over the ingredients. What I've got here is a half a cup of cultured sour cream. Now, if you can't buy cultured sour cream, don't worry, it's also very easy to make. I have a video which I'll link to in the iCards, and if I run out of iCards, don't worry, I'll put links down in the description below. But basically, all you need to do is take cream and culture it. And you're going to culture it with a little buttermilk, a little milk kefir, or a little yogurt. And then through the miracle of time, your cream, the heavy whipping cream that you've added uh, some culturing agent to, the buttermilk, the yogurt, or the kefir, uh, will turn into sour cream. And the nice thing is it'll be cultured sour cream. And you may wonder why I put emphasis on this when I say cultured this, cultured that, you know. The reason is that cultured products like a yogurt are rich in good bacteria. And then again, good bacteria, scientists tell us, is good for us. It's good for our gut health. And the healthier our gut, the healthier supposedly we are. 
So using uh, like probiotic rich products like uh, the apple cider, the raw apple cider vinegar that you can make homemade or a cultured sour cream that you can also make homemade is a good way to introduce these type of foods to yourself, to your family and friends that are familiar. You're not going to be able to really tell a difference between some plain sour cream that you may find at the grocery store that's not cultured versus a cultured sour cream uh, that if you can find and buy or a cultured sour cream that you make homemade. And that's really my goal, to make uh, foods that are better for us but that are also familiar in taste. Because if you try to introduce nutrient-dense foods to yourself or family and friends and they taste very different than what you're used to if, you're, if you've been eating primarily processed or prepared foods, uh, they may be rejected and you really don't want that to happen. You want to introduce these types of foods slowly and make ones that taste familiar. And this Thousand Island dressing completely fits that bill. This will taste very familiar to any other Thousand Island dressing uh, that you've had that may not be as nutritious. And next you're going to need a half a cup of mayonnaise. And if you want to learn how to make homemade mayonnaise, I also have a video and a printable recipe along with these other, you know, all, there's also a printable recipe for the sour cream. And uh, I'll put that in the iCards or in the description below. It's very easy to make. You can make it in one minute if you have an immersion blender. And so I said that's a half a cup of mayonnaise, a half a cup of sour cream. And then what we've got here are two tablespoons of raw apple cider vinegar. Uh, now if you want, you can uh, substitute uh, lemon juice. And if you decide to use lemon juice, use fresh lemon juice. It's very high in vitamin C and it's nutritious. And also zest the skin of the lemon and add the zest as well, because the zest has a lot of nutrients. It's rich in antioxidants and is very good, scientists tell us, at fighting disease and so on and so forth. So if you decide to use lemon juice, use the zest too. And here you're gonna want a quarter cup of ketchup. Now, uh, if you want to make a fermented ketchup, which I highly recommend using so that you're adding in the cultured sour cream, you're adding in the raw apple cider vinegar, and then you're adding in your fermented ketchup, I'll also link to that. I have a video where I show you how to make that. It's very easy to make fermented ketchup. So be sure to check that out if you're used to buying store-bought ketchup. I think you'll find that it tastes equally as good as anything you can buy in the store, and it's much better for you. And next, you're going to want a quarter cup of some type of pickle relish. Now, if you made um, fermented pickles with me a while back, uh, you can chop those up and just get enough so that you have a quarter cup. We're all out of ours, uh, so what I'm using here is a store-bought relish, but one that is sweetened with sugar and not high fructose corn syrup. So if, if you do need to use a relish, if you don't have any fermented pickles, uh, and you want to use a relish in a jar, see if you can find one that's just made with sugar and not uh, high fructose corn syrup. Now if you are using your fermented pickles or your homemade relish that's not sweetened, uh, you may find that between the ketchup um, and a little bit of, even though the apple cider vinegar is tangy, it does have a little bit of a sweetness to it, uh, that may be enough sweetness that you like for your palate for your Thousand Island dressing. However, if you do want to sweeten it up just a bit, uh, if you are using you know, a chopped dill pickle or a fermented pickle, whatever the case may be, or, or a pickled, um, a dill pickle relish, something like that, that has no sugar in it, uh, you can add a teaspoon or two of sugar. And I recommend using like the dried cane juice, the sucanat, um, or a little bit of maple sugar, or a little bit of date sugar, one of your more um, whole sugars, as opposed to just using white sugar. And then last but not least, you're going to need a teaspoon of salt, and I've got my usual fine ground sea salt, and then a half a teaspoon of freshly ground black pepper. Now I'm just going to make this in a canning jar. This is a 12 ounce jelly jar. It works perfectly. Uh, any jar you have will be fine. And I'm just going to go ahead and put my salt and pepper right in there. And like how I like to do with all of my dressings, I'm going to go ahead and just add in that vinegar and just give that salt a little time to dissolve. And next will go in our relish, and then our wonderful fermented ketchup. And then we'll get all this mayonnaise in there, and then we'll add in the sour cream, and we'll give it a good shake. 
Well, this was a tight squeeze. <laughs> so I'm just giving it a good stir uh, with my little whisk and it's coming along beautifully. Now, just for good measure, I'm gonna put my canning lid on and my canning ring and now give it a good shake. Oh, this looks delicious. I'm just gonna put a little bowl, a little bowl, a little bit in a bowl here using a clean spoon and we'll give this a taste. Alrighty. Oh, this looks wonderful. Uh, nothing like a good Thousand Island. Mmm. Delicious, perfect. Now I'm just gonna label this and put this in my fridge. And since this is a dairy-based dressing, this will last in my fridge for about a week. But I don't think it'll be in our fridge that long because this is so delicious, I think it's gonna go in a few days. And this particular recipe and the amounts that I used will make about a cup and a half. Now we're gonna make blue cheese dressing. And this is probably my second favorite after a good Italian vinaigrette. Now I'm gonna make a little less than I did when I made the Thousand Island dressing because I'm the only one in my family that eats blue cheese dressing. So this is gonna be about a half a cup. But as I said, with all of the dressings, you can adjust up or down in terms of quantity, just adjust the recipe to make the amount that you want. And the ingredients for a blue cheese are very simple uh, because I really like to keep it simple so that that flavor of the blue cheese really comes through. Now you're gonna want a quarter of a cup of mayonnaise and a quarter of a cup of sour cream. And this is cultured sour cream and you can use your homemade mayonnaise for this. It'll be perfect. But if you are using store-bought oil or a store-bought oil, store-bought mayonnaise, I recommend to try to find something that doesn't contain soybean oil. Try to find a, a mayonnaise that's made uh, with a less processed oil. You may see some of the new mayonnaise being made with avocado oil or part olive oil, various mixes like that. You wanna look for a more nutritious oil like an avocado or an, or an olive oil based mayonnaise. And if you make this homemade mayonnaise, uh, the one minute immersion blender mayonnaise, uh, I like to do a combination of coconut oil and olive oil and sesame oil. So that's a quarter cup of each, a quarter cup of the mayo and a quarter cup of the sour cream. And then you're gonna want a quarter cup of crumbled blue cheese. And this is American blue cheese. It's Maytag blue cheese. And if the name Maytag sounds familiar to you, it should because in their family, there's one line of the family that makes the appliances. And there's another line of the family, uh, one of the gentlemen who went into the cheese making business and he's famous for his Maytag blue cheese, among other things. I believe he has a winery and also a brewery, but his American blue cheese is very popular. And I find that this American Maytag Blue is perfect uh, for making a blue cheese salad dressing. It's got the perfect level of um, blue cheese flavoring. It's not overpowering. It's not un you know underwhelming. It's just perfect. Uh, you could certainly use an Italian Gorgonzola, uh, but uh, or even if you're getting real fancy, you know, an English Blue Stilton. The only drawback is those are expensive. And I think those cheeses are best left to simply eat on their own rather than blending into a salad dressing. They also have a different level of flavor and they may almost be overpowering in a blue cheese dressing. Whereas I find this Maytag, it's perfect to just eat on its own. It's delightful and it works beautifully in a salad dressing and it's less expensive, um, especially if you're living in the United States and buying a blue cheese. So I highly recommend, I get this at my local grocery store and I live in a small town, so maybe you can find Maytag Blue in your area, but if not, an, an, another American blue cheese will work fine. And next, this will come as no surprise to you, but I'm gonna add in a tablespoon of apple cider vinegar, the raw apple cider vinegar. Uh, you could certainly use lemon juice also. Um, in the previous recipe for Thousand Island dressing, I recommended adding the zest of the lemon, and I would recommend the same here too. It doesn't have an, a significant change in the flavor, uh, but it adds that little bit, little bit of extra nutrition. Uh, but I do like to go with the raw apple cider vinegar. I think it just complements the flavors really well. And then I've just got a half a teaspoon of the fine ground sea salt and a quarter teaspoon of the freshly ground black pepper. 
So we'll go ahead and add in our salt and pepper into our jar. And as I like to do with all of my dressings, I'm gonna go ahead and add in this apple cider vinegar, swirl it around a little, let that salt dissolve. Next, I'm gonna go ahead and add in all the rest of the ingredients, and then we'll give it a good stir. Now we'll get our sour cream in. And if you notice with all of my dairy-based dressing so far, and you'll see when we do the other ones as well, I always like to use a mixture of mayonnaise and sour cream. Now you could have certainly in the Thousand Island dressing, uh, you could have just done all mayonnaise. I'm just not a fan of that. I find that the sour cream just adds a certain nice level of flavor, especially too if it's the cultured sour cream that's adding the nutrition uh, of the cult that comes with the culture. Uh, but it also, I help things soften, especially if you're not a huge fan of mayonnaise. It helps soften that what can be somewhat overpowering flavor. Uh, I find for me, that's in my humble opinion, everybody's different. Some people probably could eat mayonnaise out of the jar <laughs> with a spoon. But I find the combination of the mayonnaise and the sour cream, which I think is especially important when making a, a blue cheese dressing, works perfectly. Now we'll go ahead and get in this blue cheese carefully. <laughs> Now I just wanna show you the consistency of this, and I'll take a close-up picture so that you can see that. I like it like this. I think that's perfect. But again, if you wanna thin this out, you certainly can by adding, uh, as I said, the regular milk, raw milk if you have it, all the better, uh, or buttermilk. And in a pinch, you can thin it with a little water if you have to. Well, now I'll take a little bit Put it in a bowl here, and we'll give this a taste to see how it is. I've got a little lettuce here, and I think this is gonna be wonderful. Mm. Oh, that's so good. <laughs> Excuse me. The Maytag Blue is so delicious in here. And you know, you have to laugh because you're probably gonna say, oh, what does she own the company? No, I don't. I have no connection with Maytag Blue. I just really find that it's so lovely in a blue cheese dressing. So I highly recommend it if you can find it at your grocery store. And since blue cheese is a dairy-based dressing, this will stay fresh in our fridge one week. Now I'm gonna show you how I make my homemade ranch dressing, which is an actual recipe with multiple ingredients in it. However, if you wanna make a quick and easy ranch dressing, all you need to do is take a half a cup of mayonnaise and a quarter cup of buttermilk. Now, if you don't have buttermilk on hand, don't worry. You can take a little sour cream and thin it with milk or water to the consistency of buttermilk, or you can take a little yogurt, Greek yogurt or, or regular yogurt, and thin it till it has the consistency of buttermilk and use that in place of buttermilk. But the bottom line is a half a cup of mayonnaise and a quarter cup of buttermilk or something similar. And then, if you were with us when we made our homemade seasoning mixes, and you've got your ranch, your homemade ranch seasoning mix, you can just go ahead and add this into, that, into those two ingredients and you'll have a quick and easy ranch dressing. And this, uh, you'll wanna start with a teaspoon and then work your way up to a flavor that you find that you like. Now I wanna make a mention about this ranch seasoning mix that we made because I got a lot of questions about this. Everyone wanted to know, why didn't I add in any powdered buttermilk? And the reason is, in my traditional foods kitchen, where my focus is always nutrient-dense foods, I don't like to use powdered buttermilk. First of all, it's not a cultured food, and secondly, it's been heated at very high temperatures to turn into that powder, and that heating process damages some of the nutrients that would normally occur in buttermilk, some of the proteins and so on and so forth. And again, as I said, it's not a cultured product. So in my humble opinion, it's more of a nutrient lacking food than a nutrient dense food. And so it's something that I don't use. I would rather keep my seasoning, my ranch seasoning mix without it. And then when I go to make the ranch, the quick and easy version of ranch dressing, just use real buttermilk along with the mayonnaise. And I just wanted to show this to you. This is uh, my homemade buttermilk. This is the byproduct of when we, we made cultured butter. And I think I linked to that in the iCards, but it'll definitely be, the video link will be in the description below. 
Um, but if you go back and watch that video, if you've not seen it, um, or maybe you don't remember, the buttermilk, the byproduct of making the cultured butter, looked very watery. And I told you, put it in your fridge, leave it for about a week, and it will actually start to thicken because it's culturing even in your refrigerator because it's a byproduct of cream that we turned into butter, but that we first cultured. We cultured the cream before we turned it into butter. And as you'll see, if you go back and watch that video, it's a lot thicker now than it was when it was just the, by the original byproduct coming off the butter. And you've got buttermilk. So if you give making cultured butter a try, you'll also have your cultured buttermilk, real buttermilk. Now we're gonna get ready to make a delicious buttermilk ranch dressing. Now to make this from scratch, what you're gonna need is a half a cup of sour cream and cultured sour cream if you have it, a quarter cup of mayonnaise, homemade if you have it, and a half a cup of buttermilk. And as I mentioned earlier, this can be the real buttermilk, that's a byproduct of making cultured butter, or it can be the buttermilk that you purchase at the store, that's a cultured milk product. If you absolutely don't have any buttermilk, uh, you can use a little yogurt here thinned with some milk, uh, or you can just add a little bit extra sour cream, again, thinned with milk to give you that consistency of buttermilk. Then what I've got in here is, in my mortar and pestle, is one clove of garlic that I've mashed up. Uh, you can certainly add more if you want, but keep in mind if you're making this and you're gonna go ahead and put this in your refrigerator, each day that it marinates more, that garlic flavor may become a little more intensified. So I recommend starting with one clove of garlic. A lot of recipes may call for two cloves, but I really recommend starting with one clove and see if you're going, if you are gonna have that in your refrigerator for a couple of days, see how you like it as it sort of, I don't know if I can really say it mellows, it more intensifies uh, in flavor. Uh, so that's my recommendation, one clove of garlic. And next, what I've got here is a teaspoon of salt, that's the fine ground sea salt, and a half a teaspoon of freshly ground pepper. And I just want to mention something about the salt, because I've received a lot of questions from those of you who are on salt-restricted diets. You can certainly leave the salt out of any of these dressings and maybe use a salt-free uh, salt substitute uh, in place of the salt, or just try it without and see how you like it. But you can adjust actually any of these seasonings, you know, make these dressings your own so that they're pleasing to your palate and whatever dietary restrictions you might have. Now what I've got here are some dried herbs. I've got a teaspoon of dried parsley, I've got a teaspoon of dried chives, and I've got a teaspoon of dill. And the dill, I would say, weight by weight, is going to outweigh uh, the parsley and the chives because for me, uh, a buttermilk ranch dressing, I really find that the dill is the star of the show. Now you can certainly use fresh herbs depending on what time of year you're making this. And if your garden is just overflowing with fresh herbs, you can definitely replace the parsley, the chives, and the dill with fresh. And you're probably going to want to bump up the amount you use to about a tablespoon chopped. And I know this will come as no surprise to you, this is raw apple cider vinegar. Uh, I've got to get this in the, in the salad dressings. And this is just two teaspoons of raw apple cider vinegar. Now, if you want to use lemon juice in place of the apple cider vinegar, you definitely can. Again, just about two teaspoons of the lemon juice and also throw in the zest while you're at it. Now I'm gonna make this in a pint-sized jar, uh, which is 16 ounces, because I learned from using my 12-ounce jar when we made <laughs> the Thousand Island dressing. It was really right up to the rim. This will give us a little more room to work with. So what I'm gonna do is take our salt and our pepper. I'm just gonna go ahead and put that right in. And then, as always, I'm gonna put in my apple cider vinegar and let that salt dissolve a little bit. Now we'll go ahead and add in all of our wonderful herbs. And you know, as I said, you can make this the, your own. If there are other herbs you really like that you wanna add into your ranch dressing, by all means do. And just play with it until you find the combination that you like the best. Now we'll get this garlic in. It smells wonderful. I love garlic. <laughs> now we'll go ahead and put in our half a cup of sour cream. And in goes our quarter cup of mayo. And now our half a cup of buttermilk. Now I'm gonna to switch to my whisk 
and give this a really good stir and then we'll give it a shake. We'll put the lid on and give it a shake. Now, I want to mention, if this was something that you would want to make as a dip, as opposed to a dressing, then you can do a couple of different things. You can reverse the amounts of sour cream and mayonnaise. You could put a little more mayonnaise, a little less sour cream, um, or you could keep it the same, the same amount that we did here, the half a cup of sour cream and the quarter cup of mayonnaise. But when it comes to the buttermilk, you just want to put in a half a cup of a half a cup. That's what we used for here. You want to put in just a quarter cup of the buttermilk so it'll be thicker and that'll make a great dip. Now I'm going to put on my canning lid. Uh, this is a, a wide mouth pint sized jar. So I've got the wide mouth lid and ring and we'll give it a real good shake. Oh, this this looks wonderful. I'm going to put a little bit in this jar, in this jar, in this little dish here. That's a clean spoon and we'll get a little lettuce. We'll give this one a taste and we'll see how it came. Oh, look at all that dill. Looks glorious. Mmm. Ah. <laughs> that is so delicious. Excuse me. And it's just the right amount of garlic. And even if the garlic intensifies a little, once it's refrigerated, it's going to be fine. I really recommend that just that one clove. This is perfect. The next salad dressing that we're going to make is green goddess dressing. And this is a real retro dressing and something that I remember from my childhood. I love the flavor. It's so rich with parsley, which is sort of the star of the show. It's just got such a fresh, like green flavor to it, if that makes sense. But it's just very fresh, very bright, and it's pretty much perfect on any kind of salad. It also makes a great dip. I mean, you're just dipping uh, carrots in it, radish, whatever you want. It's just a really wonderful dip. The first thing that you're going to need is a good bunch of parsley. Uh, if you buy it at the grocery store, just buy that whole bunch that's usually twined together. Uh, if you're cutting it out of your garden, just take a nice big, you know, sort of double fisted handful. Next, you're going to need a half a cup of sour cream. This is cultured sour cream and a half a cup of mayo. Homemade is always best if you've got it. And then I've got one scallion here and it's just rough chopped. Everything's going to go into the food processor, which we'll talk about in a minute. How oh, actually we'll talk about it now so that you, you don't feel that you can't make this if you don't have a food processor. I'm just going to do this in my food processor. You can do this in a blender, a regular blender. You can do it in a high speed blender. You can do it in one of those like little, what do you call it, like ninja blenders. Uh, you can, if you're enthusiastic and you really want to put in a little elbow grease, you can even make this by hand if you don't mind chopping up all the parsley. Next, I've just got one clove of garlic here. I've just kind of crushed it in half uh, just to make it a little easier for the food processor. And then I've got a tablespoon of dry tarragon. If you can grow tarragon, I, it's very hard for me to grow tarragon here in Texas, in central Texas where I live. It's just a little too hot and a little too sunny. <laughs> That's a good thing, <laughs> but, but tarragon doesn't like the, the accommodations here too much. So I've just got a teaspoon of dried tarragon. Uh, if you do have fresh, if you grow fresh and you've got it handy, you want about a tablespoon. And then in the middle here, I've got something which I know won't surprise you, uh, a tablespoon of raw apple cider vinegar. And in my food processor, I've already put in a teaspoon of Dijon mustard, a teaspoon of fine ground sea salt, and a teaspoon, or actually a half a teaspoon of freshly ground black pepper. And since I'm using the food processor, I'm just using the typical chopping blade uh, that comes with it. No matter what, uh, appliance that you're using, you probably will have to stop it periodically and just scrape down the sides to make sure that everything uh, does get incorporated. But I think those tiny little press bead blenders are pretty good at getting everything mixed without any scraping down of sides. So maybe with that one, you don't need to worry about it. But even with the high speed blender, regular blender, or the food processor, you probably want to just check and scrape down the sides. The first thing that we're going to want to do is just put in this clove of garlic since it's not chopped up. It's just smashed a little bit and I'm going to lock my lid into place and I'm just going to send this for a whirl to kind of get that garlic chopped before we start adding the other ingredients. Next, I'm just going to go ahead and add in our apple cider vinegar. And I'm just going to give that another little whirl 
just to help mix it with the salt and let the salt dissolve. Next, I'm gonna put in the green onion and we'll put all this parsley in. And you just wanna make sure that it's washed and dried fairly well, even just a shake. It's fine if there's a little water on it. Um, for the most part, you wanna just have the leaves and not include too many of the stems, although sometimes I do put in all the stems, especially if I'm doing it this way and not by hand because the food processor, and I would imagine those high speed blenders are probably very good at this too, of uh, really pretty much pulverizing everything. Alrighty, let's give this a whirl. Finally, all we need to do is add in our dried tarragon and then we're gonna add in our sour cream and our mayonnaise. Now, if you're familiar with green goddess dressing, you may notice an ingredient that's missing, and that is anchovy paste. I love it. And if you're making this and you like anchovy paste and you've got it handy, all you need is about a teaspoon, and it adds wonderful flavor. But my family's not too fond of anchovies, so I'm not gonna add it to this batch. Well, let's give this a whirl, and then we'll get ready to give it a taste. Well, I whirled this for about a minute. You wanna make sure that everything is really incorporated and the dressing turns a beautiful green. I'm just gonna scrape down all these sides, and I'm gonna remove the blade, and then we'll decant this, and we'll see how it turned out. I think it's gonna be wonderful. Oh, this looks heavenly. I think you're gonna really be pleased. I'll overlay a picture so that you can see the color and the consistency. This is glorious. I wanted to mention a little tip to you that I forgot to, to tell you about earlier. Uh, after you cut up your scallion, if you save a little bit, and oh, I got some parsley out of here, if you save a little bit uh, of the scallion, of the white part, and with the root, if you plop this down in a little, uh, little glass, a little uh, juice glass, and with a little bit of water in the bottom, and just keep an eye on the water, refresh it, you know, add to it, whatever the case may be. Over the next couple of days, you'll start to see this sprouting and growing another scallion. I love that. This smells fantastic. Now let's give it a taste. Mmm. As good as I remember. <laughs> and since this is a dairy-based dressing, this will stay fresh in your fridge about a week. Now, if you'd like to learn how to make more homemade pantry items, be sure to click on this video over here, where I show you how to make 10 homemade seasoning blends, including that ranch dressing mix I showed you earlier. And I'll see you over there in my Texas Hill Country kitchen. Love and God bless.